Andrew banged his head on his desk, the thud echoing through his study. The elderly retired human general bored his eyes into the glowing reports scattered before him. Reports detailing the cruelty, the brutality, the utter domination by the Draconis Empire as they conquered and subjugated countless species across the galaxy. The Draconis, powerful dragon-like aliens, had been expanding their reach for decades now. Andrew leaned back in his chair, the Leathercree King. He remembered a time when the Draconis were humanity's allies, before they demanded humans join their empire, before humanity refused and fought back in a devastating war that ended in only a fragile stalemate. An urgent ping interrupted Andrew's recollections. He tapped a button and a face flickered onto the display. Primus, a high-ranking Draconis official who had been discreetly contacting Andrew, Primus's snout quivered, his reptilian eyes wide with fear. General Phillips, Emperor Kazor plans to exterminate humanity. He is building a doomsday weapon and readying his fleets for invasion. Many of us oppose his tyrannical rule. Please, you must help us stop him. If you don't act now, your entire species faces extinction at Kazor's hands. The screen went black, leaving Andrew in stunned silence. The fate of humanity hanging by a thread. Andrew's heart pounded as he strode into the briefing room. Admiral Jameson stood at attention, his face grim. Three figures sat around the conference table, the best of the best. Captain Marcus Reed leaned back in his chair, arms crossed. As one of humanity's most skilled pilots and infiltrators, his cocky smirk radiated confidence. Lieutenant Ryan Carter methodically polished an array of menacing explosives, the weapon specialist's eyes gleamed with anticipation. Dr. Elias Nakamura adjusted his glasses, poring over classified files on Draconis anatomy. The brilliant xenobiologist would be key to exploiting their weaknesses. Andrew cleared his throat. You all know why you're here. The Draconis are on the verge of wiping us out. Emperor Kazar is building a doomsday weapon to exterminate the human race. Our inside source, Primus, has given us a chance to stop it. Admiral Jameson pulled up a hologram of a fortified base. This is the secret facility on Zephyrus Prime where the weapon is being developed. Your mission is to infiltrate the base, gather intel, and destroy the weapon if possible. Primus has provided stolen stealth tech to get you inside. Andrew's comm beeped with an urgent message from Primus. Work fast. Kazor is purging traitors and I fear discovery. The weapon may be ready in days. The team boarded a sleek ship, outfitted with Draconis cloaking devices. The thrum of the engines filled the air as they rocketed towards Zephyrus Prime. They landed silently on the planet's jagged surface. Creeping towards the looming base ahead, a patrol of hulking Draconis soldiers suddenly blocked their path. Plasma fire erupted as both sides engaged in a vicious firefight. Reed dove for cover, squeezing off precise shots, Carter lobbed a volley of explosives, the blasts sending scaly bodies flying. Aim for the gaps between their dorsal plates, Nakamura shouted over the chaos. The team adjusted tactics, armor-piercing rounds finding soft flesh. As the dust settled, a lone Draconis soldier lay gurgling in a pool of neon blood. Reed hauled him up and growled, Talk! Now! The soldier sputtered, The weapon, Kazor will test it. Human colony days away. Reed dropped the twitching Draconis. Grim realization dawned on the team. They had a catastrophe to avert and time was running out. The infiltration of the Draconis base continued, with the human team using the intel gained from their captive to navigate the winding corridors. The soldier's revelation about Kazor's accelerated timeline added urgency to each step. As they crept deeper into the facility, a series of anguished cries caught their attention. Exchanging quick glances, they followed the sound to a heavily fortified door. Carter made quick work of the lock, and the door swung open to reveal a horrific sight. Rows of cages lined the room, each containing prisoners from various species. Many bore signs of torture and experimentation. The stench of fear and despair was overwhelming. My God, it's a prison camp, Andrew whispered, his face pale. A weak voice called out from a nearby cell. 
General Phillips, is that really you? Andrew rushed over to find a gaunt, battered man he recognized instantly. Ambassador Petrov, we thought you died in the last war. Petrov shook his head. The Draconis have been using us as guinea pigs. That weapon they're developing, it's a biological agent designed to wipe out entire species, and humans are one of the main targets. Dr. Nakamura cursed under his breath. We have to destroy it and get these people out of here. The team quickly divided tasks. Reed and Carter would hunt down the bioweapon, while Andrew and Nakamura focused on freeing the captives. Alarms began blaring as they raced through the base. Draconis guards swarmed from all sides, plasma fire filling the air. The humans fought back with everything they had, but the odds were stacked against them. A searing bolt caught Nakamura in the shoulder as he shielded Andrew from an attack. They ducked into a nearby lab, desperately seeking cover. Inside, they found a treasure trove of horrors. Tanks filled with grotesque experiments lined the walls. Notes on genetic manipulation covered the tables. The Draconis were trying to engineer super-soldiers by splicing DNA from various species. Reed spotted a small sealed container in the corner. I think this is it, the bioweapon prototype. Just as the Draconis closed in, a new group of fighters burst into the room. Primus had arrived with Draconis rebels, turning the tide of battle. Together, they freed the remaining prisoners and blasted their way out of the base. But as they fled, a transmission came through. Kazor's invasion of human space had begun, and the bioweapon had already struck a human colony. The ship hurtled through the void of space, engines straining as Andrew and his team raced back to human territory. Primus and his Draconis rebels sat in tense silence, their scaly faces etched with worry. The news of the bioweapons deployment hung heavy in the air. They touched down at the colony, and the ramp lowered to a scene of utter devastation. Buildings lay in ruins, fires raged unchecked. Everywhere, colonists writhed on the ground, faces contorted in agony as the weapon ravaged their bodies. My God! Andrew whispered as he surveyed the carnage. Dr. Nakamura leapt into action, barking orders at the medical teams. They set up triage centers and began treating the infected, working tirelessly to ease their suffering. In a makeshift lab, Captain Reed and Lieutenant Carter pored over the prototype weapon, sweat beading on their brows as they raced to find a way to counter its effects. A shout rang out from the perimeter. Incoming Draconis forces! Andrew cursed under his breath. He gathered the able-bodied colonists and militia, positioning them to defend against the impending attack. Primus and his rebels took up positions alongside the humans, their knowledge of Draconis tactics invaluable. The Draconis ships screamed overhead, disgorging troops in a rain of drop pods. At their head stood General Zartoth, Kazor's right-hand man. His eyes glinted with malice as he surveyed the weakened human defences. The battle was joined, plasma fire crisscrossing the battlefield. Humans and rebel Draconis fought side by side, desperately trying to hold back the onslaught. Andrew coordinated with Admiral Jameson's fleet, directing orbital strikes against enemy positions. In the chaos of battle, Andrew found himself face to face with Zartoth. The Draconis general towered over him, all rippling muscle and gleaming scales. They clashed in a brutal melee fists and claws flying. Zartoth's strength was immense, but Andrew's skill and determination matched it. He ducked and weaved, landing precise strikes at the Draconis's weak points. Zartoth roared in pain and fury as Andrew pressed his advantage. Finally, Andrew had the general pinned, his arm locked around Zartoth's throat. Where is Kazor? Andrew growled. Where's the main fleet? Zartoth choked out a laugh, you're too late, human. Kazor is leading the attack on your precious earth. He will burn your cities, shatter your fleets. Your leaders will fall, and your people will know despair. Andrew's blood ran cold. He tightened his grip, and Zartoth fell limp. Andrew activated his comm. Admiral Jameson, recall the fleet to earth now. Kazor is attacking. Across the colony, a cheer went up from the medical teams. Dr. Nakamura burst into the command center his face alight with triumph. 
We did it! We have a cure for the bioweapon! The news galvanized the defenders. With renewed purpose, they drove back the Draconis invaders, buying precious time for the cure to be mass-produced and distributed. As the colony began to recover, Andrew gathered his team and allies. We have one final mission, he said grimly. Kazor is attacking Earth. We need to stop him once and for all. They boarded their ships, a ragtag fleet of human and rebel Draconis vessels. Engines flared as they set course for humanity's homeworld, for the final battle that would decide the fate of the galaxy. The stolen Draconis stealth ship shuddered as it latched onto the hull of Emperor Kazor's massive flagship. Andrew gripped his plasma rifle tight, his heart pounding. He glanced at Reed, Carter, Nakamura and Primus, seeing the same determined expressions etched on their faces. This is it. We need to end this now, Andrew said, his voice steely. Primus and Nakamura get to the engine room and rig it to blow. Reed, Carter, with me. We're going after Kazar himself. The airlock hissed open, and they slipped inside, the eerie green emergency lighting of the Draconi ship washing over them. Alarms started blaring. Intruder alert, intruder alert, a metallic voice screeched. Heavy footsteps thundered towards them. Kazor's elite guard. Reed and Carter opened fire, plasma bolts sizzling through the air. Armored Draconis warriors fell, screeching, but more kept coming, a relentless tide of scales and claws. Fall back, keep moving, Andrew ordered, laying down covering fire. They battled their way deeper into the ship, leaving a trail of smoking Draconis corpses. Andrew's comm crackled. Andrew, we've reached the engine room. Nakamura reported, panting. Rigging the reactor now. You've got fifteen minutes tops before this whole ship goes up. Copy that. We're almost to the bridge, Andrew replied, blasting a Draconis guard's head clean off. They burst onto the bridge, weapons ready. Emperor Kazor stood at the center, a looming figure in black armor. But something was wrong. Kazor was... changing. His scales rippled, his body convulsing grotesquely. What the hell? Reed breathed. Kazor threw back his head and roared, a sound that shook the very bulkheads. His form twisted, growing, warping. Draconis scales merged with human skin. Muscles bulged obscenely. Kazor had turned himself into an abomination, a monstrous hybrid of human and Draconis DNA. Witness the future of the Draconis, Kazor bellowed, his voice a guttural rumble. The experiments on Zephyrus Prime were only the beginning. I am the pinnacle of evolution. I am a god. He lunged forward with terrifying speed, talons outstretched. Andrew and his team opened fire, but the plasma bolts sizzled harmlessly off Kazor's armored hide. Kazor backhanded Reed, sending him flying across the bridge to slam into a bulkhead with a sickening crunch. Carter unleashed a volley of micro-missiles, the explosion staggering Kazor momentarily. But the Emperor shrugged off the blasts, closing in on Carter. His fist hammered down, crushing the lieutenant into a bloody pulp. No! Andrew screamed, unloading his rifle into Kazor's face. Kazor laughed a hideous sound. He grabbed Andrew, lifting him effortlessly by the throat. Andrew choked, struggling. Kazor's grip was like iron. You failed, human, Kazor sneered. Earth will fall, the Draconis will reign supreme. Andrew's vision was going black. With the last of his strength, he raised his pistol and fired point-blank into Kazor's eye. The Emperor howled in agony, dropping Andrew. Andrew scrambled to his feet, snatching up a fallen plasma rifle. He fired relentlessly, pouring all his grief and rage into every shot. Kazor staggered under the onslaught, his monstrous form coming apart, disintegrating. With a final earth-shattering roar, Emperor Kazor fell, a smoking ruin. Andrew collapsed beside him, blood leaking from a dozen wounds. He knew he was dying. With trembling fingers, he keyed in the code to overload the flagship's reactor. The ship bucked and heaved as explosions tore through its hull. Primus and Nakamura, their sabotage complete, barely made it to an escape shuttle. They watched in stunned silence as Kazor's flagship detonated in a blinding flash, taking a huge chunk of the Draconis fleet with it. The remaining Draconis ships, 
their emperor dead and their leadership in tatters, quickly broadcast their surrender to the battered human fleet. But as Admiral Jameson surveyed the devastation wreaked upon Earth, he knew the price of victory had been steep. Cities lay in ruins, millions were dead, and humanity's greatest heroes had fallen. In the coming weeks, as the grim task of rebuilding began, Primus worked to forge a fragile peace between human and Draconis. It was a peace bought with blood and sacrifice, a peace that Andrew and his team had laid down their lives for. The galaxy would never be the same, but perhaps, from the ashes of war, a new hope could rise. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.